All right. All right. All right. I haven't done that in a while. What's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome on back to the Cinema Wallets podcast. This is going to be our eighth episode, our finale for season two of House of the Dragon. Uh, currently sitting at the lowest score on Rotten Tomatoes of any episode in this series so far. Sitting at a nice 48% by critics. Ouch. Not good. Ouch. Not good. Uh, so we're going to be talking all about this eighth episode. We're going to try to move through it a little bit quicker than we normally would move through it. And then we're going to do kind of a season two review all together at the end. So this one might run a little bit longer than normal, but we're going to try to shift through everything as fast as possible. Uh, before we get going, uh, I am joined by our aficionado of all things Westeros, my buddy, Lukey Klein. Luke, what's going on, baby? How we doing? Doing well, brother. Thank you for having me once again. Um, of course. I know it was kind of a, a weird way to end the season here, but... Uh, I think there's still plenty of good stuff to take from it. Uh, we'll get into the things we don't like. We wish that we were a little bit different too, but I'm, I'm still pumped and ready to get ready to dive into it a little bit more. So wrap this wrap this baby up. All right. As always, thank you to Kirk. Thanks for allowing the show to go on the uh, on the network, getting more eyeballs on it. Episodes have been doing better and better, so I uh, I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Kirk. Yeah. Not to mention, uh, got another freaking text from Real Man today while I was at uh, at the movies. And another Minifan freaking went into uh, went into PVC to get their glasses, went out of their way to travel over there. Love it. So, yeah, shout out to the Minifans. Shout out to Kirk for letting me uh, promote fucking Pleasant Vision Center on, on the podcast all the time. Shout out Kirk. Thank you, Kirk. Uh, so let's get into it. Episode 8, The Queen That Ever Was. Like I said, lowest rotten score tomato. And this is the finale. And this episode, as soon as I got done watching it, my first thought, like, instantaneously was like this is a good episode but it's not it's never mind a finale it's not a penultimate episode like this should be a if this was this season should have been 10 episodes i agree and i'm now like sure than ever the reason that it's not especially seeing as how it ended is i i have to think it's the writer's strike yeah yeah it seems like not only did they they didn't compress anything they just chopped off the last two episodes right it's very strange i think it was just going to take a good amount of like time as far as shooting goes because you're doing a big battle i would imagine it'd be the battle for the gullet to end the season yeah so i would imagine that's going to be a lot of shooting i feel like that battles are going to take longer than just having conversations in these these little sets that they have yeah this is going to require a bunch of extras explosions all that shit and then obviously it's going to take more time in the editing because you figure you have dragons you gotta do all that cgi so you would imagine that hbo which the writers already said they wanted the season to be 10 episodes but HBO kind of said, nah, they were just trying to get the season out and try to get the money that they could. Yeah, it seems like it, unfortunately. Um, I know that the showrunner wanted to do 10, and I think it was later in the process that HBO told them 8. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think you're probably right that it is the strikes and, and the time crunch and the, the right business side. All the studios. Yeah. I hope it doesn't hurt them. They, they have teed up so much good stuff, but it just feels like we deserved a little more payoff before the... Before uh, they wrap things up there, so for sure, because this season has been underwhelming. So you're expecting some big payoff, which, yeah. but you could just feel like the way it left off was weird. Like it it left off right before this battle is about to start, which yeah, is just the like Gullet and weird... Hall. They had all those armies True. closing on Hall. They had the North Army crossing the the Twins Ridge. They had Sheep Stealer and Reyna showing down. That was annoying. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna get to that. That was annoying to me. Yeah, the, the way that they, I don't know, they're, they're trying to cover too much, but then also not <laughs> progressing the story at the same time. I don't know. It's just, they, they've right. got 30 characters they care about and everybody gets a one minute scene every episode and it, it, it I don't know, makes it all choppy. Like say like Game of Thrones, right? Like their endings always, for the most part, left off cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. And season one did the same thing too. But, like, there's a difference between, like, a cliffhanger and then I feel like what ended this episode. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they didn't feel the same to me, like, at all. Like, this felt very unfinished. Yeah, I, I unfortunately got to agree with you. Um, I, like I said, I am excited about it, and I'm not losing steam like some people are. I'm, I'm pumped for the next one, uh, next season. But I, I do think we deserved some payoff and to tee up literally like eight things in the last montage that they ended the season with yeah and this which they've been teasing this whole season and then none of it gets paid off is, is a little disappointing yeah that is there's one or two parts of this episode that i didn't like for the most part i liked it but 
Yep. Uh, we opened up across the narrow city, which we haven't seen basically any of the free cities uh, in this show really so far, I don't think. Right. And very little looks into the, the pirate life, too. The, yeah, they the definitely hierarchy. tried to go a little bit more to the, the book, I feel like, free city version. They get the dye beers and the dye hair. Yeah. And all that. Yeah, I love seeing the blue hair because um, not only there's Fagon from the books who dyes his hair blue to hide his Targaryen hair, and then um, also. Um, Danny's boy toy there. Oh yeah. Um, what's his name? Uh, what Dario. The, Dario Naharis. Say Dario, what he has he has a uh, blue hair and a mustachio, and like all his stuff in the books that they just completely skipped in the show. She got that uh, that big dude. He's a husky. He's like a big oh yeah. He's, he's awesome. got scars all over him for yeah. all the battles. I can't think of his fucking name, but he was a savage, and he had some crazy uh, crazy ass shit going on too. Yeah, strong Belwas. Yeah, that's who it is, yep. man. There you go. Yep. Nice call. Yep. That guy was cool, man. Yep, he was a eunuch. So, like, yes, I had no balls, right. but, like, that's right. I guess there's a couple directions your body can go after you get castrated. You can turn into, like, a meek, high-pitched singer, or you can turn into this, like, <laughs> monster who is not worried about anything other than killing. He's killing not, he's like, no distractions. Yeah. He's just a bodyguard and a killer. I remember, his, like, him being kind of funny, too. Like, fucking... Yes. Being a very, like, laxed fucking sol- soldier. Yep, and so cocky, because he... Um, his, his cool everybody. thing is he he lets every single person cut, cut, cut him once before he kills them. There you go. And he shows and he has this huge round belly because he Covered doesn't scars. have sex, so he loves food. He has That's this huge right. belly, and uh, yeah, he has like hundreds of scars all over his belly and arms, and and he's like, "That's how many people I've killed." I'm gonna probably just end up going to rereading those because God knows we're never gonna get to <laughs> fucking with him. We gotta stop saying that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I said, open up across the narrow sea. We got Tywin Lannister. He's there to um, work with the fucking what is it, the Triarchy, right? Yep. To try and uh, get them to come break this blockade. And I figured we could basically just run through this entire storyline in one time. Yeah, pretty pretty silly stuff, but it was it was slightly funny. Yep. So he convinces them. All they want is the stepstones, which they basically just said that they want to tax people going in and out. So it's like, all right, that's not that big of a deal. Cool. But then he has to win over the commander of the fleet. We got a new character, Admiral Lohan. Mm-hmm. We got this gangster girl. Yeah, who identifies as a man, apparently. Yep. They refer yep. to her as him. And uh, we get to later that he, yeah, no, he has a bunch of go. wives and stuff. Yeah. They go to a mud fight, which fucking everybody was all like pissed off about the scene. Again, this is another thing where I'm like, this is like Game of Thronesy. Like, I enjoy all of this. It just doesn't fit into a finale. Again, this is like if this is episode eight or episode seven in a ten episode season, then it, like I love it. Like I love it. Yep. I think it's funny. We get to look into a character that we basically know like nothing about, which is I'm cool with that. We get to see a part of the show that we haven't seen, which I've seen a bunch of comparisons that people are saying like Thrones to um, to House of the Dragon, and it's like to me it's like it's very different in the sense that hot like House of the Dragon is so like tight. Yeah. It's like one family, basically, for the most part. You have a couple of other characters outside of that. And the whole show, for the most part, takes place in King's Landing or Dragonstone. We've been into the Riverlands a little bit now. But aside from that, it's mostly been those two locations with, like, maybe, like, a dozen or 15 characters, basically, that we're, like, following. You know what I mean? That are regulars on the show. Yep. Game of Thrones, you're in every part of Westeros, basically, with a billion different characters who all have different fucking ambitions. Right. Like, to me, it's, like, it's incomparable. Like, especially as far as, like, the speed goes, it's, like, well, it made more sense in Thrones, all the politics, because you're meeting all these new peoples and seeing all these new areas. Whereas this, like I said, it's so compact. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, and, like, what you're seeing on screen, you feel like should have more impact on these other characters that are so closely... Related exactly. and associated with each other, but then just continues to <laughs> stall. I keep seeing that. Like, online, it's a big thing. They're like, oh, you do, if you don't like this, you, you don't like Thrones, or this is the politics, and da 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 And I'm like, this has nothing to do with liking Thrones. Love Thrones, but it's like all the politicking in that show adds up to something. Whereas this show has been a ton of the same shit that goes nowhere at all. Yeah, I mean, it is going culture. to add up to something. I guess. But I mean, hopefully. So hopefully, retrospect, it seems okay. And, uh... I, I do appreciate the character building that we're seeing here, but I agree that the politics is a little bit, it's its not lacking. You aren't seeing the cause and effect with any of this, this stuff. We're just learning the thoughts of the characters rather than seeing their, yeah, their yeah, thoughts yeah, yeah, changing yeah. anything. That's why I probably like this this whole storyline a little bit more than most people. Like I said, it didn't fit into the finale, but I was like, all right, moved. <laughs> we're in a different part of, like, not actually in Westeros. We're across the Narrow Sea. Cool. Haven't been there since, like, Daenerys left, basically. 
And then we get, like, a totally new guy, but it's from a family we know. Like, here's a Lannister. Fucking, at some point, it has to be a descendant of characters that we know. Yep. So it's like, all right, cool. So like I said, mud fight, uh, wins over the girl, going to go to the gullet with them. And then, like you said, fucking ends off. <laughs> Not only does she agree to go, but he, she wants Tywin to be the father of one of uh, one of her kids, so he's going to fuck one of her wives, or multiple of her wives. Yeah. I'm sorry. Seems plural. like all of them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed like at first, like, you know, she identifies as a man. She, He was, like, worried what kind of sex he was going to have with her. Well, before <laughs> like, they, what are you going to do to me? And then, before they introduce <laughs> the character, they say he. So you're right. right. Yeah, so he was like, uh, what are you going to do to me? Am I, uh, am I taking it here? What's going on? <laughs> and then he's like, oh, you got a bunch of wives that I need to bang. <laughs> Lovely. Much better. Wives. I, I laughed at that. That was very funny. Yeah, it was funny. Um, a little Pirates of the Caribbean, this uh, this whole scene here. Kind of. kind of. I, I get you. J- no, I, I like that. Yeah, it was just a different tone. But they mentioned it right away in the uh, after the episode thing that they wanted to have that kind of break from from all that. I think and, it's uh, great. And they mostly cut back to him after the most intense scenes. It's like, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Chris yeah, yeah. and Cole being all suicidal and then cut straight to the, the mud fight, like stuff like that. Oh, that's cool. I like that, actually. I like the way they use that as a whole. I like the fucking free cities. I'm down for all that pirate shit. That, like, Dorn, I loved all that shit. I liked when Danny was across the narrow sea. Yeah, I agree. It was a lot of, like, just different. They showed, like, a bunch of different parts and they all had like, kind of, like, a different vibe. That's where Aegon's heading now. Yes. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. And then Helena kind of fucking gave us some prophecy, so we're going to get to that, but right. that was interesting. Uh, another thing that we've kind of seen already this season, uh, we're just going to kind of skip an action scene that we could have had. Eamon burned sharp point to the ground. Yeah, that was stupid. And we just skip right over it. Kind of like it reminded me of the Brackens and the the uh, Blackwoods there, how they opened that episode right. kind of almost the same way. Yeah, that would have relieved a lot of these complaints if they just at least had... A montage of yep. something burning to the ground. Yeah. A- Vagar and Eamon just flying. It didn't even have to be, dude, like, we're talking, like, people don't even need that much, like, seconds, you know what I, I mean? Just, just, like, give us the, the v- him going back and forth a few times, times. like, yeah. we're talking about 10 seconds. You can give us 10 seconds. And that doesn't happen in the books, so they just threw it in there and didn't, didn't even do it. That's, it see, like, it, that makes it yeah. even crazy. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. Yep. They're making him more villainous, but that's the only purpose of it. It's so dumb. Uh, speaking of Eamon, before we keep going, I told you right before we started, but I saw something online today. But it was like throughout the entire season, Eamon had like, I think it was 28 minutes on screen. Yeah. Over eight episodes. Obviously, a lot of them are over an hour. Right. And he rides Vagar. He's supposed to be their best sword. And he's basically king virtually in this season. And he got like 28 minutes of screen time. That's crazy to me. Yeah, that is wild. That's yeah, half of one episode. There's eight episodes. It's like a sixteenth, right? Probably and he's like seven percent, major, major, seven percent of the show. Yeah. He's on screen. That's yeah. stupid, nuts. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, we skip that. We go to Clubfoot. He's gonna convince. Uh, he's gonna convince Aegon to leave Westeros. Let's bounce up out of here. We'll take a little time off, and then we'll come back when the time is right. Mm-hmm. Uh, just two things I noticed about this scene that I I noted. Cock went poof. That was pretty funny. Yeah. What did he say? Burst like a sausage or some shit like yeah. that. Yeah. And he can't even pee without it running down his leg and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But which puts him in a tough spot where he now only has a female heir, which is the whole point of his fucking war, his like main defense of why he should be king over Rhaenyra. And so now he's left in a spot where he's either got to let Aemon be his heir or support his daughter to be his heir. Uh, just kind of interesting. Well, uh, tricky spot he's put himself in. He's in a bunch of tricky spots. Definitely not making babies with his uh, melted sausage. Right. <laughs> but, you know, that makes me think, like, now that he can't do that, that's just, like, that's one of his, uh, which actually we'll get to, the Realm's Delight, which is his nickname, which is awful. Yeah. But one of his delights is fucking obviously hitting all the brothels, which now he can't do. Yeah, that was his, like, main driving force in life. So maybe that makes him a little bit more interested in, like, politics and fucking learning. You know what I mean? He's yeah. got to put that time into something else now. Yep. So I could, you know what I mean? Almost like Varys in it, kind of like, all right, you know what? And Clubfoot, fucking either way. Like, yeah. all right. And he wants to be loved, obviously, like you said with his nickname. Yeah, Aegon, the realm's delight. Right, which I don't know if you remember it, but that's actually what Rhaenyra kind of went by. What was it? It's what she was known as. It's more in the book, but they do mention okay. it in the first season of the show. Um, that's when she was like the young cupbearer and young and beautiful. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, She was referred to as the realm's delight. Yeah, yeah, And uh, 
yeah, so that's him wanting to be like her when he says that too. I got gotcha. you. Or to uh, you know, be loved the way that she's loved. That reminds me of uh, one of the first scenes there when she comes in and she, he's like, where were we? I was with mother. And, she, and he sniffs her out. He's like, a dragon bag? Just sniffing it. Just yeah. sniffing the dragon. Yep. Dude, season Stank. one was, In hindsight, season one I enjoyed like so much more in hindsight than I did when it was going on. Hopefully that's how this one ends up being too. We'll see. We, we shall. We shall. Uh, Reyna, again, we can kind of just sum this one up like we just did with the Lannister. She basically is just going to chase this thing. She's cold. It's daylight. It's nighttime. I hated this so much. Yeah. And all in like 25 second chunks. Yeah. Just like sprinkled throughout the episode. It's very strange. It was just, it was awful. And like I said, I feel like it very much left it not like on the season end. It felt it was like something that we would see like next week kind of thing. I know. Which is, that's how this whole episode felt to me. It felt very much not like a, I'll see you in two years. It was like, I'll see you next Sunday. You know what I mean? Right. And again, this is another thing that's not in the books, too. She, right. There's a, I kept seeing that. There's another character, right? Yep. Yep. Nettles. Nettles. Which actually, I feel like we talked about two weeks ago because yep, I remember we saying, all right, right. It was like, we're already introducing a bunch of new characters, like another one that's almost in the same vein yep. when we already have Reyna and isn't really Right, which it. makes sense. But I, just to, to match up with what you're, what you're saying earlier about hating uh, Eamon's scene. That was an added thing, just out of nowhere. This is another one that they're adding in and not paying off. Is that uh, is that Nettle's character like cool? Is that Nettle's she's super cool. Good? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh um, shit. I don't want to get into too much because I don't know what they're gonna pull from her story, but uh, I can tell you after for sure. There's some. She's very involved. All right, I got you. Yeah. I got you. So yeah, we're gonna see her tra- like you know basically just traveling the veil for the entire episode, and then it ends with her like just seeing Sheep Stealer. Right. That's and, it. Yeah, finally showing down. All, looking all mangy and stuff. Like it has Weird like a, wings. Yeah, it has like some sort of flesh eating virus or something. Yeah, it's all like yeah. Looks some fleas. Um, like that, like baddish, like almost with the like the yeah, really really translucent wings and uh, or transparent wings and yeah, all these like splotches on it and stuff. And thought it would be scrapping. Bigger. Definitely thought it would be bigger. Yeah, same. Assumed a wild dragon like. Just smashing down sheep probably would be a little bit more in size, but yeah. And another thing that they left out from the book was that there were there were a few attempts of people who said they were Targaryens who tried to claim sheep stealer and didn't didn't manage to. No, it's not in the veil though, right? In the books? No, nope. It's also in the Dragonstone area. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, speaking of Dragonstone, that's where it goes next. Quick scene. Alf's being a complete dickhead now that he's got a dragon. <laughs> yeah. Hugh's very like uncultured swine. Yeah, for real. <laughs> uh, Hugh's very like soldiery, respectful. Like, kind of knows how to present himself in front of nobility. Yep. Uh, and then we see Jace. Jace gets like a good scene, I guess. But at the same time, it's like against like the weakest guy in the room, so it's just like low hanging fruit. But he scares off, not scares off, but he uh, he sets off straight. Yep, and puts him in line. Yep, definitely pushing out his insecurities there. He's uh he's very threatened by the whole thing with uh other people being dragon riders. And then the first thing Wolf says to him is like, "Oh, your hair is brown. Look at that." Like, yeah, and he went to like basically noogie him almost. Yeah, but when it really is a point of pride for Ulf that he's like that was his defense. He's like, "Yeah, look at the look at the queen's son. He has brown hair. That's why my hair is not not white." You know, that's true. And yeah, uh, that is so true. it's a point of pride. But he doesn't realize that Jace is extremely insecure about that jason's like, insecure about everything yeah like your person is main button right there not gonna not gonna go well we're really gonna get into jace later, yeah but it, yeah but he's pouty get, yeah. doing some john snow it's funny you use the word pouty because i actually have the word pouty right there. <laughs> yeah very john snow <laughs> very john <laughs> pouty bitch that is, is that something yeah pouty, <laughs> pouty bitch is exactly what's there <laughs> yeah uh, let's see. So yeah, that was basically that. We see Renera and Corliss. Uh, they're talking dragon riders, some strategy. Corliss is like immediate action. We got to go, 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 go. We see that he renamed his ship, the Queen that never was, which I didn't necessarily think was like super respectful, but whatever. Yeah. And she always hated his fucking boats in the first place. So. True. I don't know. <laughs> she hated him, a... his seafaring life. Weird, weird name. Yeah. But, uh, it seems like he kind of gets through right now. I was like, yeah, we got to move the, uh, the only thing I thought was kind of interesting was he had every opportunity in this moment to be like, yeah, actually, like, he's actually my bastard son. And just, like, doesn't say anything at all. I know. He's still just struggling like, yeah, with he's it. A, he's a good, like, you know, basically he's good at being a Navy guy. <laughs> yeah. It's good <laughs> first shit, mate. Man. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, it's, it's weird. He's really struggling with it. He's finally, like, 
seems like he's making some progress now that he sees how like successful and like apt they are to like do stuff but both his boys are quickly rising up the ranks in a matter of weeks right so he's feeling some pride but even even still he hasn't quite said anything even to adam who who rode the road sea smoke you know he's he just like good job well, well done yeah well yeah, done. yeah yeah well done yeah that was what we talked about last, that's right, you here last week it was me and mick yeah that's right i forget about that uh let's go here let's see shout out mick who's going through fucking driving to north dakota right now with the boys for the show oh wow that's <laughs> from east coast yeah from where we are oh my driving god driving from here to north dakota to do Jesus. or south dakota i'm sorry north dakota south dakota it's, dakota. it's gonna be a couple days either way. oh yeah 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 to go in there to do a live show in someone's basement. Sick. It's the greatest show in the world. It's Hell the greatest yeah. show in the world. <laughs> uh, we go to Harren Hall. This was interesting for one or two reasons, I guess. Damon's preparing his army. And we finally get this dude who comes up, uh, Sir Broom. Yes. It was the man that Reynara sent over to basically have words with Damon. Tell him that. I think she said uh, they want to continue the last conversation that they had. Right. Also, just to get rid of him because he was like the most outspoken, being a pain in the being ass. A pain in the ass, yeah. So I would say the first thing of notice is that uh, obviously he's telling Damon that he'll basically go turncoat and fucking go against Reynard in favor of Damon. Right. We need a king, not a queen. Which Damon seems shocked by almost. Like right. he even says it. He's just like, I never thought you'd be the guy, but he like kind of gives like turns his head and almost like smirks, like oh shit. Yeah, and he still seems like he is still feeling that option, even despite everything. I don't think he's quite made his decision yet. Honestly, I think it's with this last vision we see that yeah. coming up that he finally is like, okay, no, Rhaenyra. I think almost in that moment he was ready to be like, yeah, I'll take that house. Like, right. I'm raising an army. Like, right. hop on in, boy. Despite all these fucking things and his. His last one with Dan- with Viserys, which was so powerful, he still still isn't convinced. Yeah, yeah. Which is why Alice is crying on his bed later. I bet. But she's, we're gonna get she's like I tried everything. You still don't get it. It's a good thing we're moving quick because there's a lot of things I want to dive into that I fucking <laughs> that we're gonna be getting into very shortly. Right, yeah. uh, the last thing I noticed about that season, of course, is I mean that season that scene is uh, my boy. Shout out Sir Simon again. The man's fucking watching yeah. the entire thing from the distance. Legend. Kind of very like little, remind me of Littlefinger big time. Littlefinger was always doing that in Thrones. They showed him a bunch of times, always like <laughs> yeah. lurking here or there, and that's what Sir Simon gave me that impression of in this scene. Like he's just watching from the door and just like peeking around, like oh shit, yeah. out of focus. But in the background, you can tell it's him. Yeah, or they'll, or they'll focus in on him after the scene ends or something. From the second this man was on my screen, I was like, I like this guy all the way yeah, through. He was great. <laughs> Sir Simon's awesome. He's he, a fucking man. Yeah, he is great. He's awesome. No complaints. Uh, Eamon continues to not give a shit about the small folk, which obviously, of course, is going to come back to bite him because we spent so much time this season talking about it. Uh, Allison asks Helena if she wants to basically leave. Like, do you want to bounce up out of here? We'll take the granddaughter, which name I don't know. You got that one? Uh, Jahara. Jesus. Yes. (laughs) Easy. You could probably guess that one. (laughs) Jahara and Jaharis. (laughs) Yeah. What a bunch of assholes. You could have guessed, probably. (laughs) Uh, Um... But I think the uh, more important thing after that, which obviously we're not, I don't, I mean, I'm not surprised that Allison wants to bounce out of town, but Eamon comes in and he very forcefully tries to like drag fucking Helena to her dragon because she's needed in battle, basically. Right. Uh, Allison says no. She's like, fuck that. This is not like, this is too far. It's not worth winning at this point or this price. Not this point, this price. Yeah. And talks him down for once. Actually gets through to him for a second at least. He backs down and leaves the room surprising yeah, like what's he gonna do like realistically speaking like are you gonna like fucking hold Strap off her your to the mom dragon. fucking yeah like heisman your mom while dragging your sister like yeah you know what i mean like that's a bad fucking look dude yeah no, like right. she's the queen helena's like the actual queen your regent like she's queen queen and then you have allison who's the former queen who basically ruled for like what 20 years uh probably yeah 20 years, yeah, enough like for Aegon to be how old he is. Yeah. So, yeah, 20. Yeah, something 25. like that. Yeah, yeah, 20 uh, years or so. One thing I want to mention, too, is um, when it cuts to this scene, it's right after Damon obviously, is co- contemplating if he should say, uh, yeah, let me be the king, or no, Rainier should be the queen. Yep. And so I feel like cutting to Aemon, who is now like on the upswing of his madness, yep. as Damon's, Damon's coming, coming, down coming down from his, is kind of cool. Like, I like that. Yeah, they're like... He's fighting off that madness in him, and he's close, but he's still still kind of crazy and willing to maybe betray his wife slash niece. But uh, 
And I like, like that too because the characters the obviously. Like, have, I'm sorry. What was it? That's it. Good. You good? I was just saying I like that too because obviously the characters have kind of mirrored each other. Like Eamon's oh, specifically yeah. been looking up to him the entire time. Yes. Yep. They are very similar and, yep, mirroring each other in many many ways. I like that a lot. The up and down. That was I like that a lot. Yep. That was cool. No, it's very nice. Uh, Allison asked the Magus Third to escape the city, which this fucking Mace has been getting called on by everybody. Yeah. And this is also right after Eamon just said, put a halt on, like, everybody leaving the harbor. Search right. every ship. That's true. And then she immediately is like, I need, I need a ship. Get me out of here. Yep. How many episodes ago was that when we were, like, security problems? Yeah. Like a real issue with these people. Yeah. So is that people not listening to him, to Eamon's orders? Oh, or? I gotcha. Or is it just them being terrible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if he has good orders, it doesn't matter because they all suck. No, sh- Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seemed like the guy that Eamon was telling to block the harbor was kind of like thrown off and set aback he's like oh yeah he was like right, the the small folk are already starving and now you're cutting off some of their fish which is all they were talking about is basically all they had was fish right and so maybe he just didn't do it and that's why she was able to escape maybe just i could see that him. i could see that yeah because obviously this whole season like people have just been able to go wherever the fuck they want without any problem like yeah. Damon, Reynara, Allison have all moved wherever they want to go. Yeah. Crazy. Uh but yeah, Allison's trying to get out. We go to Gwen calling out Cole for fucking his sister. Cole continues to be a simp bitch. Yeah. Smelling some panties on that. On a log over there. It's <laughs> 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 my girl. <laughs> oh and shit! Green's like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I like fucking out. I don't know if you noticed, but every single surrounding soldier, like in the immediate area, was all like, oh. like all like high school shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look yeah. over there! Look over there! Yep, taking out their phones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's about to throw down. World star. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, fucking cold as. Just kind of, you know, like I said, as a simp bitch, like, complains, like, all I've done is chase woman, and it's fucking led me here. Yeah. Dude, get over it. <laughs> get over it. And then it gets real depressing, too. Um, yeah, actually, dying I was going to kill myself. And shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's like, dying on the battle. That, that, too, saved me from killing myself. Dying on the battlefield. He's like, it'd, it'd be a relief or a release or some shit like yeah. that. Yeah, it's like, the dragons dance, and men are like dust under their feet. All our, good... all our thoughts and endeavors are nothing. We march now toward our annihilation. To, not, to die now will be a kind of relief, don't you think? That's a good line. It's fucking brutal. That's he is so, What's so the first sad. thing that we, uh, the dragons dance? Dragons dance, dance and men are like dust under their feet. That's, that's all of our one. thoughts and Very our endeavors important. are nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we march now toward our annihilation. To die will be a kind of relief, don't you think? That's pretty yeah, That's good. He's fucking <laughs> depressed. Yeah, no shit. And feels useless. Like, dude, you should have, like, you just played your hand wrong right out of the gate. You should have just been banging fucking Raynara for all of this time. Yeah, should have been her whore. Just like he, he hated, hated the idea of, but it's just Allison's whore instead. That throws this entire right. thing into total disarray, like, as far as everything goes. Like, then does she still get with Damon? Like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Does she just have a bunch of coal babies? <laughs> right. Apparently, it was all destiny. Nobody had any... Any choice in the matter? Three-Eyed Raven. Yeah. I bet you love that. Three-Eyed Raven. You fucking love that. Oh, I do. It's my favorite, <laughs> it's my favorite thing in this entire world is the Three-Eyed Raven. <laughs> yeah. I'm addicted to him. Uh, Chase is a big old pouty bitch. And then we see <laughs> one of the gangsters of the world, Bela. Bela talks him off the edge. Basically just says, stop beating a pouty bitch. <laughs> yeah. Well, fucking Jace, dude. What a fucking... This kid... I was like ready. I was like, all right, this guy is going to be like my favorite character. Yeah, that first show. scene he had to start off the season where he's like marching on the wall with a. Uh, yeah, I liked him even last sick. season. Yeah, yeah, that too. Like, I, I thought he had a big come up on that first episode. Like he, no, he did. He got older and like got got a new hairdo and stuff. For and, sure. Uh, graduated. But. I liked him right out of the that um, when they were like teenagers, like in the court. I think it was yeah, it was before they switched actors when they're in the courtyard. It's the scene where um, Cole gets his ass kicked by uh, Strong. Yep. But fucking. At first, Aegon's kind of just hammering on because he's bigger, he's stronger, he's older and all that. But then he gets up off the ground, he fucking starts hammering back at him. It's like, yeah, let's go, kid. Yeah. 
And then fucking obviously his dad is like the, what they call him the strongest guy in the kingdoms. Yep. So yep. I was like, so all right, hard. half dragon rider on top of that has a dragon. I'm like, all right, this guy is going to like, Jace is going to be my guy. I know. Like, I want my him to guy. I want him to come up, but yeah, down our season, down our season for him. He had a good, uh, that good one, di- one diplomacy thing at the twins, but uh, like, I guess things really come of that except in our end montage with the old guys walking across it. All he's done this entire season is bitch and complain. And then he had one good plan where I was like, all right, that's something, bro. Like that, there you go. There's something. And then he fucking complains basically like the week after because it only went like half his way. Like we yeah. got the dragon riders from our bloodline, but they're of low blood. So no, like, yes. yeah, that was weird. I, I think we do have to feel for him a little bit or at least hear where he's coming from, but he needs to be stronger than that. And, uh, more supportive, but. But like when um uh, when Rhaenyra takes Adam with her to Heron Hall in a little bit, instead of him, you know sends That's true. sends Bela to go defend like do some scouting, do like, scouting yeah. I don't know, all those little burns which are to protect Hella, him. But yeah, right. I would be a little worn out too if I were him. But no, he, he I needs would to be, be too. But be like be mad. Don't be like pouty and fucking bitchy. Like right. You got the fire. You have fire and blood. Like show it. Don't be sitting there so fucking. Mom won't let me go anywhere. <laughs> I'm with you. Fucking, he like needs I to said, do, do better. Yeah, for real. Bela's being fucking, Bela's awesome. Like, fucking, yep. Bela, Bela and, like, Damon and all my two favorite characters. Right. Show. Bela's got limited responsibilities, too, but she kills it when she's called upon and doesn't complain in between. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that's yep. how it should be. Actually, that was one other very small scene uh, that was at some point earlier this season where uh, one of the people on the Black Council was kind of calling out somebody. It wasn't when Renauer was there, but it was in regards to to Bela, and he was like, "Dude, shut your mouth! Like, we wouldn't have any of this information without her." Yeah, show some damn respect, right? Which that's good. Way to step up for your uh, what do they call that? Not fiance, but their match. Betrothed. Betrothed. There you go. That's what I was looking for. It is fiance, but yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah their no, fancy old English shit that they like to talk about. Yeah, that's. I was just. I was looking for that too. It, it, uh, it was a rag that's coming up, so I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, Rhaenyra holds a little dinner here for her her advisors, basically Bela and Jace, and then the new dragon riders. Perfect. That's what I was going to mention. Oh, all right, perfect. Just, how hilarious is it? The like the difference between regular people and then the royalty. Like we kind of get used to their super formal, like Shakespearean way that they talk, and then the Targaryens. Yes, yeah, like Jace and Rhaenyra and Corlys and. You know, all all the royal people. And then yeah. and then you got Ulf, who's just like... Continues to be a douchebag. Yes, but also just a regular guy in a lot yeah. of ways. And uh, it's just a hilarious little... It makes you realize how formal and like Shakespearean the main characters are without uh, without everybody else there. He did have that line at the end that was pretty good. Because she was like, like, you know, you'd watch your tongue. Like, he was like, well, you better knight me then. Right, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, like a knight... Uh, yeah, a knight doesn't disrespect someone at their dinner or whatever. There you like, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Chase calls him out again. He's like, Jesus, you guys have no selfie, uh, no <laughs> yeah. sense of humor. Uh, but it ends. Uh, Raven comes in. Fucking Sir Simon's Raven, because he was, like I said, being the man. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically told uh, Raynar that, yo, like there's some some scheming going on behind your back at Harren Hall. And Raynar bounces, and like you just said, ask Adam, of all people. Uh, yeah. specifically chooses him. So I feel like that's kind of telling, too. Yeah. I feel like because Hugh and Ulf kind of just, like, showed up to, like, try and, like, claim one and stuff, whereas Adam, like, the dragon chose him, A, and then B, like, mm-hmm. swore the knee to her, like, right away. Yeah, he's been the most loyal and, like, outwardly, like, submissive. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else was kind of a question mark. Can we trust them? But he seems very... Reliable. Well spoken. Yep. Also, she knows now that he was working like in the Valerian fleet. She was obviously Corliss is her hand. Yep. So I totally get that. I could see like Adam kind of hurt like him and Bela kind of being the, the two people that she uses the most. For sure. Especially if she finds out about his, his father. True. That'd Absolutely. be a great little just and help out Jace's uh, worries too <laughs> that it's actually someone who. It was, you know, of, uh, it can be connected yeah. directly and stuff. Yeah, I mean, eventually, like all these guys can be directly connected, like not far off either. Like, right, Alf is half brother to Viserys and Damon. Right, so that makes him his uncle, or half uncle, however you want to put it. 
Yeah. And then what was it? Hugh is the uncle. Yeah, oh. I was struggling to figure out that that tree part, but it seems nephew, like nephew, 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 nephew. His mom is Jaharis's daughter, who was but like, a bastard daughter or a Targaryen who just happened to live in a whorehouse. No, I think her. I think she was a Targaryen from what I was reading. But she so just looked up to it. Used Jaharis, her power to be a like she whatever was she like wanted. Always, yeah, she was always like a almost kind of like Aegon. Yeah, kind of like just like a sexual partying like degenerate, right. and he like. I think basically like almost like exiled their kind of thing. Gotcha. From what I read at least. Yeah, disowned kind of thing. Yeah. And her son was Hugh. So he would be the nephew of Damon and Viserys. Okay. So, so it's not like, like these Jason. people are far yeah. off. Yeah, exactly. Like they're they're very quickly connected. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, one other quick thing is when they she offered them the, the knighthood for doing their duties here. Yeah. Um, Earlier, Hugh mentioned that to his wife, like, I'll be a lord. We'll, yeah, yeah, we'll never have to worry again. So even though knighthood is good, um, is that going to be enough for what he was planning on? Is that a b- bad offer? Um, obviously, she's reluctant to offer more because she, same thing as Jay. She wants to protect what Targaryens are and not give these people that now have nukes a nation as well, you know. Right. But um, it's just interesting. We'll see. See what Hugh's, Hugh's thoughts are because he seems very like you can't really read him at all. It's, he's just kind of a brick wall. Seems courteous, but uh, he that is conflicting with what he thought he was going to get out of doing this. I also want to know like where his wife is. I want to know is it, if his wife came to Dragonstone with him or yeah. if she stayed behind in King's Landing. Right. Because I mentioned that last week when I was with Mick, I was like, I, one of these, one of those three guys, Adam, Hugh, and Ulf are going to turn, and I have. I would say almost 100% confidence that it's not going to be Adam. Yeah, which leads between, solid. yeah, between Ulf, Ulf and Hugh. And like the only, mm-hmm. like I could see, the only reason I could see Hugh, I think, turning is because like of his wife somehow. Like I was saying maybe like somehow the Greens get a hold of his wife. Yeah, I like that. Or some shit like that. Yep. He's got a soft spot for family for sure. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like he already lost his daughter, come some kind of hostage thing. Yep. But, like, I feel like that would, I mean, I don't know. I guess maybe it wouldn't be that tough. Maybe, like, they, I mean, they already found out about Adam. They find out this guy got, but, like, do they have, like, a fucking a list of the small folk and, you know what I mean? Like, their spouses and family lineage. Like, they, right. Eamon doesn't even give a shit about feeding these people. Like, is he really going to be able to go out into the streets and find this guy's wife? You know what I mean? Right. And they don't have a Laris or an Otto who are good at. Knowing people so, That's to figure that shit out. Good point. That's yeah. right. Clubfoot's working against him, and he's backing out the door, so he can't. That's a very good point. Yep. They're the kind of people like White Worm, Clubfoot, Varus, Littlefinger. They could find somebody like that. Yep. He's Great lo- call. Losing all his intel people. Yeah. Good call. Very good call. So, I mean, that's why I said last week, I was like, I, I think Ulf makes the most sense, just because he's also the biggest idiot, which makes me think that he's the easiest susceptible to, like, bribery. Yep. And they've been mean to him this whole episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's used to it, but still. Yeah, I feel like I could easily see a world where, like, somehow, like, Eamon or whoever gets, a, like, a message to him is like, yo, like, fuck that. We'll put you on the council. Fuck knighthood. Yeah, yeah. He's we'll, just like, yeah, yeah so we'll give you hair and all or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll be the master of wine. Yeah. Fuck yeah, let's go. I'm in. Yeah, you like Dorn? <laughs> dude fucking a they announced that like they got in development obviously uh seven kingdom show what is it night of the seven kingdoms that's next summer yeah. they got house of the dragon then they have an Aegon conquest show in development mm. that's a live action that goes. and then the thousand ship show is still like confirmed and on and i was just like yes nice still not Picked yes. up officially, right? Still just in development, but, yeah, it, but for yeah. like three years now. Yeah. Yeah, so that's promising. Which I would imagine that the Night of the Seven Kingdoms show isn't going to be that long, right? Like, that should only be like... A... Yeah, I mean, there's only 310-page books to base it on so far. I don't know. There's supposedly going to be a lot more books, but it's... Uh, yeah. In the first, like the first book, wasn't it like three individual stories? I'm going to read Yeah, that's all it is so far. Yep, it's... Uh, so I would the say Hedge one Knight, season on each. Hedge Knight, something, and the Mystery Knight are the three. So we have Summer 25. That'll be season one of Kingdoms. 26 will be House of the Dragon. Say 27 Kingdoms, 28 Dragon. That'll be the end of that. 
They do one year each, be 29 king. Jesus Christ, it's crazy. <laughs> I'll see fucking 1,000 ships in 2030. Let's go. <laughs> and by then, George will put out the sixth book? At that time, George will be dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be sitting here screaming. It's crazy, man. Every time I see anything about this show, that's my first thought. It's like, I'm excited, but fuck you, dude. Stop talking about television. <laughs> yeah. and go and write the fucking book. Yeah, I, I read his not a blog thing, his blog. Yeah, it's infuriating. Yeah. Absolutely infuriating. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like we said, bounces with Adam. All right, so here we go. Damon's last vision at Harren Hall. Yeah. Wakes up to Alice Rivers. Let's we go cool. to the way I would tree and they do a very brand thing like brand does it multiple times in Game of Thrones just like touches the where wood and then vroom, goes through like a whole little sequence of visions. Yeah, exactly what Damon did. Yeah, all the sap slash blood pours onto his hand and like, yeah, yeah it's real yeah, trippy. Yeah. And right before that, too, he, he sees like this vision of this weird looking guy with antlers. Right? Uh, I, you didn't catch that? Uh, no. Yeah, so like right before, like as he first sees the the tree, the, he, okay, he sees like some dude with antlers creeping up towards the tree, and then he looks back and he's not there anymore. Oh shit! No, uh, I didn't miss so, that. So that's supposed to be like the green men, who are the people on the god's eye. Okay, or not even people, like the creatures on the god's eye, who are very mysterious and magical. And uh, give me the magic. Uh, yeah, supposedly you Howland the Reed supposed to be big. Yeah, uh, supposedly Howland Reed has met them in the in the you know common day modern day uh game of thrones stuff but that was uh ned's like good friend in the books right yes the, yeah. the guy who saved him at tower of joy and stuff there you go yeah and yeah. then his and kids the, dead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 uh Jojo so and, and mira mira so those guys are crazy they their spread said to maybe be like a hybrid of people and children of the forest or something okay um but at least very magical and mysterious That'd be pretty trippy if men are <laughs> if men are banging children of the forest, yeah, can't. that's a kick. <laughs> that's a kick. <laughs> yeah. We get half and half with that. That's that's wild. <laughs> if the child of the forest is like four hundred years old, is that? <laughs> yeah, no shit. That'd be wild. I missed that. I'm not gonna lie. I got like I feel like I got everything else, but I somehow missed this dude in the tree. Yeah, it was one second. That's creeping up. Very strange. And then and then that's when she leads him to put his hand on it. And then we get into what what you got there. I bet you any money I was typing when that happened. Yeah. Especially if it was that quick. Yeah, it's just one sec. Uh, my, in, my the, mo the one that interests me the most was the one very right out of the gate. We see fucking uh, Brendan Rivers, which is the bastard son of a Targaryen who becomes a three eyed raven. Right, with his birthmark on his face. And... Now, this is the three eyed raven that we see in Thrones. Right. Right. Great. Yep. Thought so. Who is like. Not who's not born yet in this world. You know, he he doesn't exist yet in House of the Dragon. He's uh, what do you mean, Brendan Rivers? Yeah, he hasn't been born yet. Nope. Oh shit. Nope. He's uh, he gets sent to the Wall like fifty years before Game of Thrones, and that's where he brings Dark Sister, the, the like the sword, legendary the, sword, uh, and, Damon uh, sword. Yep, and then. Eventually is like the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, and then eventually right. leaves and in, into the North and is never heard from again. And that's like, I don't know, 70, 70 years before Game of Thrones. Huh. Yep. That's weird. Yep. So we're in like year 230 right now, and um, Night of the Seven Kingdoms is year like, uh, like 170. Okay, so that totally goes against what I like had in my brain. I thought Brendan Rivers had already like did all of that no, prior. No, to he, that. he has not been born yet at this point. That's weird. I thought like the fucking three eyed raven like fucking had like wildly long life. Um. Yeah. I mean, he's he's, he's, he's supposedly before. like taking over someone else's thing the same way he's passing it on to Bran. Right. So the three eyed raven, but for but Brendan Rivers it was. He's only like 150 or something. He's unreasonably old, but not not like 500 years old in uh, in Game of Thrones. He's like he's like 40 in Night of the Seven Kingdoms, which is 100 years before the show. Oh, he's in Night of the Seven Kingdoms. He is. Oh shit! All right. Yep. I started fucking Fire and Blood, but I'm probably gonna have to put that on hold and fucking just go read that one. Just because you should. You'll shit. you'll read it. I read it on a six hour flight. I read the whole all three of them. Oh damn! <laughs> yeah, it's. it's quick moving there's pictures and stuff it's it's I got a you, good I got read you, I got 
not complicated. I'll have to fucking, yeah, I'll probably just dive into that then fast. Uh, so the things I did, actually, I'm sorry. So the first thing was Brendan Rivers, Bastard Son of the Targaryen, Three-Eyed Raven. Obviously, like I said, anything Three-Eyed Raven gets me going. Uh, we see the Night King's general and part of the uh, the Night King army, which, like, to me, I saw that and I was like, yeah, cool shout out. But, like, we saw them die in, like, two seconds because the character that wasn't supposed <laughs> to kill the Night King killed the Night King yep. in a battle that was wildly dark. Yep. So I really can't care that much. Uh, but then we see a, bottle, uh, a battlefield loaded with bodies and a dead dragon. Yeah, couldn't tell which one. Couldn't tell which one. Thought it did look reddish, but then again, a lot of blood. So hard to tell for sure. Right, that was strange. But, like, Caraxes is red, but it, it, actually that's the one dragon you can say it wasn't, I feel like, is because you had that wicked long neck. And, right. like, that would have been easily distinguishable, and it didn't have that. Yeah, the neck was too thick. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, like, that thing was just a normal, like, it was a normal, a normal, a normal dragon. Yeah. A normal neck. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't no necks, wasn't long necks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that, that interests me a little bit. Uh, we see Damon drowning. Can't, for the life of me, put something on that one. Maybe something to do with the Stepstones and the, the blockade. Don't yeah. think so, but. I don't. Yeah, that was weird. Seems like he's seeing his death, right? Um, I mean, either that or it's kind of more of like a metaphoric, like he's drowning under the fucking the weight of everything. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Does he wake up right after the drowning part? Nope, not no? yet. Okay. Nope, that's when we get our uh, our big old Easter egg. And by Easter egg, I mean three dragon eggs and Danny, mm -hmm. Danny uh, Daenerys Targaryen giving birth to Yeah, him. that was so cool. I loved that. That was a cool little Gave me some chills. Yeah. Again, that's the uh, same kind of thing. Like, you know, if, if she was the prince that was promised, the princess that was promised, as she was supposed to be mm -hmm. before they ruined it. Yeah, that would have been really cool. Yeah. But instead, it's just like, hey, look at this girl who, who actually isn't the savior. It was fucking weird. You right. know what I mean? It was weird. Yep. Uh, they fucked that thing up so bad. <laughs> they fucked it up so bad. I know. They fucked it up so bad. Uh, Raynar sitting in the Iron Throne. And then it finished it off with fucking Helena, which I thought was weird because, like, if there's any two characters that have, like, no tie to each other, I feel like it's fucking Helena and Damon. Yeah, that was super weird. It was. But she says Damon is just one part of this story, basically. Just one, yeah. one character in the whole thing. So, yeah, I wonder... It seems like maybe Alice and Helena have been able to be, talk to each other or something. Like... This is the same, like, he's tapping into Alice's network here and immediately gets invaded, gets uh, dropped in on by Helena. Um, I don't know if she's getting fed stuff from Alice, if she's seeing the same things that Alice is seeing. It's weird. I also wonder what Damon just saw. Is Are it, you, like, sure that this, like, they're they're in cahoots somehow? No, this, the, this is completely right. made up. Yeah, okay. this is not in the books at all. This, the, the written by Maesters thing has no idea what's going on here. Okay. Because I kind of feel like they almost have, like, a different... I feel like Helena's got that dreamer shit, like Aegon had. And then, right. Uh, it's supposed to be different magic. Old magic and, like, dragon magic. That's what I'm thinking. What was but, what was the girl who saw the fall of Valera? What was her name? Yeah. Uh, I can't Something the dreamer. Yeah. Yeah. Da like, I think it's with the D. Might have been Danny the dreamer. Something like that. But, like, she was a dreamer. Aegon was a dreamer. Viserys... May have been a dreamer, yeah, it seems yeah. like. Yeah, he's, so that's what I was also wondering. Is this the same exact vision that all the other Targaryens have seen? That Viserys saw? <laughs> oh, okay, that, I got you, I got you. I got you. That Aegon yeah, yeah, saw, yeah. that Rhaegar is going to see later when he says, it seems it must be a warrior, and like changes his whole mindset. And I don't know. If it's, is it like the exact same thing, or are they just all accessing little different little bits, bits and pieces yeah, 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 of yeah, the future? You. Or is this the dream that has been seen by I like that twenty by, Tar Targaryens yeah, 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 yeah. or whatever. I like that. That might, like, might be almost, the it almost selects people the again. The three odd raven, right? The dreams selecting who it needs to go to in order to, like to continue the line, right? And then is three Alice an raven. agent of the three eyed raven? She, <laughs> she's literally like leaking this dream to him somehow. Like, That's true. I don't know. Is she even real? We still don't know. Three eyed raven. I know. Is, yeah. <laughs> is this Bran? <laughs> going back. This goes like directly to like <laughs> human like religion and shit like that. It's like, oh, are we like in a fucking a little uh, like, a story? Yeah, like she like, says yeah, exactly. It's all a story. That's what it is. Is our whole thing fate? Yeah, it's all a story. Everything predetermined. But one part in it, you, and you know your part. You know what you must do. That's fucked. 
and that's right after it, all the Danny stuff and Rhaenyra sitting on the throne. It's like, it's all a story, baby. Dude, fucking, I can't believe, this is another thing that goes to fucking online, but people online are like complaining, they're like, Damon fucking did nothing but like hang out in Harrenhal and have visions all season, like this sucked, and it's like, well, okay, based off of like the story and like the book and what other book readers have said, it's like, he kind of goes on hiatus, like he just goes to Harrenhal and we don't hear from him for a while, Right. so it's like, is that what you want to do? Do you want to just not see Damon, who's one of the best characters, if not arguably the best character in the show, do you just not want to see him for the entire season? I agree. You want to pull a brand and just not have him in season two? It's like you're you're having these visions, it's expanding on the character, it's expanding on the story, and it's like, okay, this is what was actually happening. And I fucking loved this. People complaining about Harrenhal and shit, I loved the visions and stuff. I thought it was one of the most interesting parts of the entire season. I agree. I uh I thought it was awesome. I, I don't understand where people are coming from if they don't like it, to be honest. Even it's, more. What did you want Damon yeah. to do? No, I agree. That is the best opportunity for them to add something, and they added something awesome. And we're finally getting some more info on how the fuck magic works in this world. Yes, and magic. Yeah, hopefully we get some answers. George said he's going to have some more answers. He, his, his style isn't to explain everything, but... No, for sure not. He likes to leave things yeah. open to interpretation. Right. For and sure. to establish a system and like how the characters live in it, but uh, there's more answers to be given, and I, th- I feel like they're they're moving towards them with the with these Alice moves. When we found out that Harrenhal was like built out of like weirwood trees and like on a weirwood tree forest, yeah, I was like right away, I was like that's so cool. I was like, this has been mentioned so many times, like in Game of Thrones, Harrenhal's haunted. It's been passed on to so many people. In this show, Harrenhal is haunted. Like it's mm-hmm. always been since Aegon came and burnt the motherfucking thing down. It's always been looming, and it's like oh shit, like. These weirwood trees, man. That again, the three-eyed raven. This whole thing's spooky, and it's like, okay, that's why. Like the bed that he's sleeping on is made of weirwood trees. Right. I found that shit out. I thought that was mad. Like to me, at least, I was like, that's awesome. Like that's mad interesting. I love it. That's great. Like I'm in. Yeah. I've talked about like I like the magic part of the show. Like I loved Melisandre and the fuck. I wish they had done more of that in the books. Like the fucking um, what's it called like the red hand. What's their army called? Remember, that like, sounds the, right. Uh, yeah. Is it the Red Hand? Army of the Red Hand kind of. Some shit like that. You know what I'm talking about, yes. right? The Red Priests have like an army. It's like, oh, I think it's only like a hundred. fiery hand. Something like that. Oh, I think it's what it is. The fiery hand, maybe. Yeah. I think, it, what is it? I think it's only like, a, I think it's a thousand. It's only like a thousand guys or a hundred people. It's either a hundred or a thousand. Hmm. It's like a very it's small, a like, yeah, almost like the Unsullied kind of fucking thing. Hmm. Elite. The Elite, yeah, exactly. Elite units. The fiery, I think it is the fiery hand. Like they didn't do they didn't do as much with like the the red priestess and shit as I wish they had. Uh-huh. Remember when they brought in that other one towards the like the later half when Tyrion wanted to like like that was another one they brought her yeah. in but they didn't really do much with her. Uh-huh. She scared a shit out of Aris. That was a cool fucking scene. <laughs> that was. Should I tell you what he said? That was fucking cool. Yeah, but I'm yeah, all of the magic. They, they uh, just bailed on that. Also, <laughs> they really did. Yeah. They really did. Sad. Uh, we go to Eamon trying to convince Helena to join him on the battlefield. And then this is cool. Helena started doing her shit, but this wasn't like the other ones that she did. She was always like, kind of used like, you know, there's, there's rats beneath the floorboard or whatever the fuck. They were always kind of hidden in truth, not in yeah. truth, but they weren't just blatant. Right. And this one's complete opposite of that. She was like, fucking Aegon's going to sit the throne again. You're going to be dead. You're going to be died. You're going to get killed in the God's eye. Yep. And then uh, he goes. Even if she goes, even if you killed me, it wouldn't it wouldn't change anything. So it's already set in stone. Yeah. Basically, is what she's saying. Yep. Which is what Alice told Damon too. It's like uh, I've been trying to tell you, you have a part to play, and like you think you have some impact on your own life, but you don't. Let me show you. <laughs> Three eyed Raven and Brent can't change. Yep. Already, yep. Yep. Like uh, now you know. It's beautiful beneath the sea, but if you stay too long, you will drown. Yep. <laughs> and Helena's bought in as well. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she's drinking the sauce. Uh, we go to another really great scene. We go to Raynara and Adam arriving at Harrenhal. We see Adam just kind of like keeping to the skies overhead watch. Cyrax does some cool shit and just like lands right in the meeting hall. Just like I will light up everybody in this motherfucker. Yep. And then we see Raynara and Damon come together for the first time since episode two, it's one or two. Wow, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. And episode it was tense one, she only one So yeah, episode two. It was tense when they left. Um, but then Damon fucking changes note real quickly. Fucking winter is coming, which is an, a line that everybody loves to hear. Oh yeah. Uh, but we need someone to bring everybody together. Viserys' choice was you, 
and Damon mends the knee, which was something that he's already done before, but this time you could tell it was fucking different. Like that last vision mm-hmm. was like set in stone. Yeah. And I did see something that I did like online. Somebody put it on Twitter was that when he like he doesn't know who Daenerys is, obviously. So there's like a like there's a possibility that he thinks like that's his daughter somehow, him and right. Raynara's daughter. And I was like, Ooh, I like that. Obviously it's not, but I was like, Right, right. I right. like this like the general thinking of that. Yeah. I like that. I, I've heard people thinking that all these other Targaryens think that because yeah, we don't actually know what the vision is that they've seen. So people theorize that they see some sort of Targaryen walking up to the Iron Throne. They think it's they assume it's them because they have the the long hair and stuff. Yeah, even yeah. though it was Danny or or somebody else, but for it to clearly be a woman with these eggs and for it to be a, so I'm gonna assume it might be his child. That's a different take. I like that a lot. Especially he like picked those eggs at the end of the first season, right? Those are the ones that he like mm, true, picked true. Out, of the, out of the cave and shit. Yeah. So there's something to that. Uh that guy, that Sir Broom guy who was ready to turn coat, he fucking heads for the doors real fucking fast. So I'm yeah. sure we're gonna see. But that's another thing. Like that's something that was like almost sure to start off like episode nine. It's like we're gonna fucking chop this dude's fucking head off. Right. This you could tell. You can just feel it though. I I rewatched it today and I could just you could tell this season was not finished. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But there's those same episodes are gonna be there in two years. They will be. It's the same ones, but just gotta wait. Fucking writer's strike, man. Yeah. I'll never forgive them for fucking ruining season two of Friday Night Lights. Those sons <laughs> of bitches, man. <laughs> one other quick thing on that one. Uh we were talking about the story, like following the story. Um the end of Damon's like oath to Rhaenyra, he says, "I'm going to serve you until death or until the end of our story." And so he's he's really committing to this is all written, and oh, I'm a, I'm a servant to the the to fate. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And just really leaning into that. I got gotcha. you. I do like that. That's my kind of guy. Yep. I'm all in on the fucking three eyed raven. <laughs> That's like, cool. Just in control and everything. <laughs> He was manipulating shit before he was even born. <laughs> exactly. I just, I, I love it. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like, no, I think, like, right now, someone's a three eyed raven. So, yeah, that would be. I don't know who it would be. It's not Brendan Rivers yet. Right. But someone, that, right now, someone's a three eyed raven. Right. The same way Bran was pulled that up to north, Brendan like, Rivers was pulled up there to take like, the place of someone else. Yeah. Somebody else already got pulled up there. Yep. There's something. I'm telling you. It goes back for forever. Yeah. The fucking I can see the it. first men and the children and all that shit. Uh, let's see. We see another quick scene that I mentioned. Uh, Corliss tries to help Alan, and Alan just basically tells him to go fuck himself. Yeah. Because, yeah, he's been struggling as an orphan. Corliss is literally the richest man in the Seven Kingdoms. Yep. I love and, it. And uh, just gets to watch him from five feet away, like, living the life while he doesn't even get a, a second look. And even as he's succeeding, he still hasn't acknowledged him. For real. And even as he's trying to acknowledge him, he still hasn't acknowledged him. Yeah. <laughs> it's no like shit. a weird, terrible execution there if i was fucking alan i'd be pissed adam seems a little bit more okay with it maybe that's because he has a dragon now you know what i mean so he's all and he sees what's to be gained but that's true but alan is just so pissed that he's never gonna forgive him seems like yeah it does seem that way how many of those you got that's the last one fuck split it with you (laughs) no no i'm I'm running out of running out of steam here uh let's see we go to, oh, here we go again. Two characters that I never, ever needed to see on screen ever again together. <laughs> Allison just breaks the security line again and just shows up, and uh, she's going to talk to Raynara. For the second time this season, they're going to basically just sneak into the other one's headquarters and just have a quick little conversation with one another. Yeah. Also this not in the was, book. Oh, sorry, what was it? <laughs> not in the book? Yeah. You know what was weird about this one, though, is that, like, Allison wasn't, like, hidden from everybody. Like, Raynara didn't let anybody know. Like, she was ready to mm-hmm. stab a nun if she had to. Right. But this one, like, her king, her uh, her queen's guard guy, her sworn protector, was the one that came and woke her up. He knew. Right. And it seemed like there was somebody else, uh, like, one or two soldiers that knew, too. Yeah. So, Allison obviously trusts Rhaenyra's people more than her Rhaenyra own. trusts yeah, yeah, Allison's yeah, yeah. people. I got you. Yeah. 
Uh, but like I said, I didn't need to see these two people on screen together ever again. And now that I know that wasn't in the books, that makes me even more irritated. Yep. But Allison's basically just like, I want to be free at all costs. Like, I want to clean my hands of this war, which is crazy because she is like the number one reason for why <laughs> this war started. Yep. And now she just wants to wipe her fucking hands clean of it, which right now I scoffs at, which I think is good. Um, before she asked basically how they're going to go about this, they did make sure to show that Allison was biting her nails again, which was a big thing in the first season. Right. They made sure to like center focus her, like almost looking at the camera. It's like, right. And almost she's showing back that she's it. back to the, the character that she was before she, you know, became queen. Right. And all she wants now is to be free. Right. Yeah. Um, but she comes up with this, you know, basically this plot, this plan, Eamon's going to be going to join Cole in the Riverlands to go fight for Harren Hall with Vagar. And when he does that, it's going to basically leave King's Landing open for conquest. She's going to make sure the gates are open. And Renara's going to be able to march right in and take King's Landing. Yeah. It's a good plan. It is a good plan, obviously. <laughs> Renara, though, which makes a good point, she goes, I can't just do this without like showing like I conquered the enemy. So she's like, I would need to take Aegon's head, and I would need to do it for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. And Allison agrees to it. Yeah, reluctant at first, but it took her like 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, it did. It was, she was very quickly. It seems like she only cares about Helena and fucking Jahara. Yeah, there you go. Crazy. Good pull, good pull. Fucking crazy. And uh, obviously it was a good move for Laris to get Aegon out of there, because his own mother was literally like plotting Bro, his... Everybody. His death. brother, his mother, everybody. Like his one best friend that you would think maybe would still have his back, was literally setting up his assassination. Which is perfect, too, as far as the comparisons to Varys, because Varys did the exact same thing, basically. Like, smuggled out the kids to fucking yeah, yeah. cross the narrow sea. Varys and Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but Allison, like I said, she she gives in. This so there was two things that I found funny about the end of this. The first one was Raynar goes a son for a son. Like, bro, we're we're past that. Like, where's y'all? Your husband had a baby's head chopped off. Yeah, the son for a son thing. It's son for a grandson. Like, we're good. We're settled. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rainier is still hurting. That's our baby boy. I was crazy. I couldn't believe that. Like, if yeah. I was Allison, I'd be like. Bro, Bro, I think we settled that way. <laughs> Your son got eaten. My son, grandson, got decapitated. Yeah, with like a dagger. Who's an infant? Yeah. Decapitated by a dagger. For yes. real. The guy who had did it got caught with the baby's head on his person. Like, I, I think I think we're even. Yeah. And then the other thing that I thought was interesting was Allison at the end of it. She goes, come with me. Right. She wants, uh, wants to be loved. Or escape to their childhood together. I don't know. Exactly what right now I wanted with they were children. Mm -hmm. To escape together, go eat cake. Right. Now Allison's Just like be free another. and yeah, not have anybody telling them what to do. But yeah, Rainier is fully into the prophecy now. She cannot be swayed. I think Allison was like kind of bashful at first when she was a teenager, but I think she I think I'm telling you. Allison right now I wanna fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm no, telling Rainier you. Rainier always did. She did. Yeah. <laughs> she always did. Allison was hesitant. Fucking dad's fucking chilling. That's wrong. That's wrong. That is wrong. But that was as soon as I heard that, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> you keep coming back to that. That first episode that we did of this fucking the recaps for episode one. That was one of the first things I said. And now it's come fucking it's been coming around this season. <laughs> a little scene with the white worm. Fucking. Um but yeah, so like I said, we're we're gonna fucking Pull this little this little plan off. We're gonna kill Aegon. We're gonna take the fucking uh, the Iron Throne while Aegon's out. Or well, not Aegon. Aemon's out. Right. Still gonna have a pissed off Vagar somewhere. But true. Uh, now we got cracks. If you're on the too. throne, that's a big yeah. That's a big starting point. I think we had last week. I said we had like seven confirmed, and now we have eight. I'm pretty sure we're stacked. Yeah. Yeah. Blacks are stacked. Cyrax, Vermithor, Silverwing, Sea Smoke, whatever Jace is. Uh, whatever fucking Bayless is, Caraxes. I was going to say, I thought it was seven. Is it seven? It's still pretty good compared to just Vagar, Dreamfire, who doesn't have a willing rider. rider. yeah, And yeah, then yeah. Tessarion, who's younger than Vermax. And then we have Reyna, who's trying to get Sheep Herder. Oh, right. Sheep Steel. Yeah. Right. So it's about to be eight, maybe. 
fucking oh man I can't think of fucking Baylor's Dragon now and it's bothering me Moon Dancer Moon Dancer there it is good <laughs> name I knew it was a good I just couldn't fucking think of it yeah it's on me um and then we kind of just go into our quick little like montage basically to end the episode and the season yeah 10 scenes like it's a powerful shot, but it's just disappointing that it's yeah. actually over right now. Exactly. I think it's yeah. it's the perfect lead up to a, a penultimate episode, which is a big battle, and then episode ten sets All up the next season. Yeah. It's like this is exact this is the thrones formula, the algorithm. Right. And it's just fucking ruined, which again, I would have to imagine is by the writer strike. Uh, but we see the new dragon writers. We see Ulf, Hugh, and Adam all being prepared for battle. Like they, you know, they're getting dressed by like the Wearing their Targ stuff, yeah. Little squires, basically. Yeah, they're getting their Targaryen armor All on. All black and, and red or uh, black and silver for um, Alan or Adam, which was, was kind of interesting. More, yeah, more of the uh, more of the Valerian colors. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So already embracing it before. That's Even, like, you could see, like, Hugh's, like, really, like, in, like, full-blown, like, battle gear. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, hands on the ground, ready to get dirty. Right. More Damon style. Yeah, whereas, like, Ulf was a little bit more, like, sleek, kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah, some leather. Exa yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. With scales and, yeah. Because uh, we did find out, that's one thing that I kind of skipped over at some point, but uh, Reynard was like, you guys are all flying out in two days to go, like, attack, like, Old Town and, is it High Garden, maybe? Um, I Castle. thought it was Casterly Rock. Casterly right? Rock, and yeah. I know it was Old Town, but basically, yeah. you know, set fire to yeah, them while, uh, while their armies are away. Yeah. Which is like the first time we're gonna like Raynar is about to get her hands like dirty, dirty. Like this is where she's gonna be putting fire to innocence. I, I feel like she should just go right for Vagar. That's the only with all this firepower. Just yeah. like yeah, just go like, to Harren. It's all over. Full blown. If they take out Aemon, right? Like who? Yeah, I agree. I would have to agree. Yeah, who they put on the throne after that? Like you can't God. fight off like six dragons at one time, especially when you have like Vermithor and Caraxes. I and know. Like, all these huge fuckers. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's a good point. They should just rush. For real. Blitz. This is what Corliss... Uh, yeah, exactly. Corliss was fucking... Corliss was saying that. Like, just push. Push because right, you just, can't lose. All right, I thought Corliss was implying that, actually. He said, uh, he said, just got to take out the head and the rest will fall kind of thing. But he doesn't specify. But her, her interpretation of that is take out the two biggest supporting cities. So... Yeah, no, that's such a good call. Why not just like uh, that's that's Rainey's from last season kind of shit. Like, yeah, just light these motherfuckers up. <laughs> that's a good call. Like, why don't we just all fly at one dragon and this whole thing is over? Like over. Yeah, yeah. Vagar would have no chance. But well, now Rainara see like that's the thing though too. Right, Rainara knows where he's going now. Like she knows that he's going to the Riverlands. Like why would you not do that? Yeah, just like everybody, let's go. We're gonna go fuck this guy. <laughs> they should, they should. So many people's lives would be spared. I mean, they've already lost their element of surprise. They they could have done that immediately after all the claimings, really. But that's crazy. I can't believe that. Like my like just evaded my brain so that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, we see uh, Darren. We don't see him, I'm sorry, but we see his dragon flying yeah. over the High Tower army. So we got another dragon in the air for the greens. Yeah. Cool dragon too. All bright blue. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice polished wings. You could tell it never been fucking into battle or anything. Yep. Yeah. It's a female dragon too. Okay. And it's uh just slightly younger than Jace's dragon. Okay. Yeah, because they say he's sixteen. At this point Jace's gotta be a little bit older. Okay. Guess. Yeah, in the book I Jace is 16 here, but um, yeah, they but the actor's 20, I know. I don't know if that's around where they're shooting for, but it, it does seem aged up a little bit. When Allison was talking to Gwen and asking him, he said he's uh, 16 or whatever. Okay, cool. Uh, the men of Winterfell, finally the, the old heads, they finally arrived. Yep, crossing the, the Twins Bridge. Yep. Uh, Pirates in the Free Cities, they're making their way on boat. They're coming up to go uh, the gullet, going to attack the fucking brigade. I don't the brigade, the... Uh, Blockade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the queen that never was. Uh, weirdest part, we see eight, well, not the, the weirdest part is Otto Hightower is in a jail cell. Yeah. No idea who, where, why. Yeah, in the dark, beneath some flame, some firelight. 
Who knows? Did you think it looked like the dungeons that they kept Night Stark in? Like just ones at King's Landing? Maybe. The key? maybe. It was weird that there was so much firelight on his face, but maybe that was someone coming to see him with a twerk. Oh, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the impression that I but, got. I don't know. It seemed... Hmm. I thought it looked like a wooden cell. Like wooden like bars on the, the cell. But I gotcha. So maybe maybe not as legit as that, but... Uh, one some of the theories I saw online were maybe it's the Beesberries. That's the um, that's the old guy that Kristen Cole killed right after the uh, the Greens decided to push Aegon to the throne. I gotcha. Uh, he was the one guy who was like, no, he was loyal to Rhaenyra. Right, he was the yeah, one guy, yeah, and he's yeah. out of the ten people in the the Green Council that were that was like trying to do the right thing, and he Cole just like stood up and sliced him. So yes. there's some theories that it's the Beesberries, but there's really no no clues really. I do remember that man. Yeah, old guy, soft spoken, but was trying to stand up for what's right. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I remember him from last season. Uh, like I said, the first thing I thought was that it was like, what did they call them? The Red Cells, right? Underneath King's Landing, I'm pretty sure. What that yeah. is. Uh, maybe. Like, I was going to say, like, the. The Black Cell? Black Cell? Huh. Black Cell? Dark, dark, black dark cell. cell. Black Cell. Uh, but that pretty much, like, oh, let me see Aegon on the Clubfoot escaping King's Landing. And that pretty much puts the wrap on that season, which is, again, <laughs> crazy. Because, like I said, it seems like everything's ready to go into an episode 9 and then an episode 10. Like, this is the perfect lead-up. Like, it's perfectly built to set everything in motion to have a nice, crazy episode 9. And then, like you said, we deal out the fallout in episode 10 and we set up, you know, season 3. Yeah, seems like it would make sense. It's going to be a great next season, but I feel like we deserve some of it now. A little unfortunate, but maybe it was just like they committed to the release date kind of thing, and they I think that's what it was. And I just went with it. Fucking Writers Dragon. I think that's exactly what it was. HBO needed a summer show. They can't have nothing on on summer Sundays. Yeah. It's like a known time slot for them. Yeah, and they needed to have it out. That's the only thing I can think of. It's the only thing to me that makes any sense at all. The only good thing that could come from it is that we might be getting four seasons instead of three. Well, I thought originally the plan was to do four 10-episode seasons. I thought that was the initial George Martin fucking thing that I saw. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember either. I don't know. The way that they stretched out the second season from what I know in the books, though, from what I've been told, it seems like they're very much built to be more than... It seemed like it was built to be four seasons. Yeah, I mean, they only did like 20, 22 pages. That's fucking crazy. Like, most of this is made-up stuff. Or not made-up, but just added yeah, context. You know, they're still Building they're not changing any of the things that happen for the most part, but they're yeah they're adding in the Allison and Rhaenyra stuff, the the Damon dreams, Damon dreams, yeah, all that shit. Yeah, all of Alice is all new. Yeah, just expanding a little bit on all the characters. Yeah, Simon fucking. Strong is all new. Simon Strong's the fucking man. Reina's thing is all changed up, right? Um, yeah, I mean we don't. We don't know much about Jace or Bela, just that they do stuff, you know. So that's all all stuff that they're working on, giving us some depth. Before we started, I was saying how fucking, like, Game of Thrones is, like, so expanse with, like, characters and just places we go to. They should have spent more time this season with these dragon riders, like, before, like, they were dragon riders. I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, Bela and Raina were nothing and all, like, season one. Yeah. I, I just feel like there was... If you're going to expand, like, instead of showing the Black Council, like, 17 times saying we should go to war, like, give us a scene of Hugh being a fucking blacksmith or a fucking Ulf doing something, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. People were getting tired of those before they paid off, though. But, but I just, especially Hugh's, I just thought it was so, like, boring. I was like, you got to expand this more than he's, like, a fan, like, a poor guy who has a family. Like, there should be more to this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right, they started with the blacksmith thing where Aegon promised him some stuff. I was, yeah, but then was they never went back to that, really. One. Yeah. No shit. I, guess, I don't know. I don't, know. I, don't yeah. know. I just feel like they could have expanded on characters more if they were going to go in depth with these people instead of showing the same. Because like, you're not even going in depth. You're just being repetitive. Right. Like, Reynard did the same shit over and over and over and over again for the last, like, season and a couple of episodes at this point. Yeah. The funniest kick in the balls right at the end, too, is that the last shot is Rainier looking off at the sea. Yeah, like exactly <laughs> like, what yeah. she was fucking like, ah. just doing. It's crazy. Not only are you ending it right now, but you're ending it with Rainier looking off into the sea. It's crazy. absolutely fucking crazy. Thanks a lot. Uh, all right, so that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on the episode, yes? 
Yeah, it's all it's all that happened. All right. So again, like we kind of said at the top, good episode. It's just not in any way a finale. It's not even a penultimate episode in my opinion. But it was a fine episode of TV. I was entertained. Yep. As long as people are not so pissed that they're never going to watch it again, I think the payoff is coming. And uh, just got to pretend that all the season, all the episodes come in a row. Yeah, I'm sure like in a few years from now, when people go back to binge it, it'll play fucking good. You won't have to wait <laughs> yeah. two years in between this, and it'll just play seamlessly right into one another. Right. So in hindsight, I'm sure it'll smack. Um. And to me, I, I just rewatched. Actually, I rewatched season one twice. So we watched it. Uh, I watched it live, and it was on. Then the following summer, I watched it again, and then just this spring, I watched it with Holly because she had never seen it. Right. And I was definitely a little too harsh on it the first time we watched it live. And I think that was because it was a tough show to watch week to week because they did so many time jumps and shit like that. Yep. But when you watch it out from start to finish, it's actually a really good season. So to me, I, I don't think this one came even really that close to season one. I enjoyed season one way more. And to be totally, totally honest, at least for right now, this is my least favorite season aside from season eight. Wow. It's harsh. Of uh, Game of Thrones. Like, I, I, I'll i take everything else that we've seen so far from Westeros. Ouch. Ahead of fucking, ahead of this. <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm definitely not that that negative on it. I, I do understand where you're coming from. Honestly, though, like, it's tough to be like, it, I don't know. Like, I said that, but it's not like that negative, to be honest. Like, it's right. not. Still, it's still your favorite show is Game of Thrones. So Right. Like, like, Game of Thrones is fucking amazing like yeah. through, like. Seven, like six seasons, and then the seven, it really comes down to like seven or this. And it's like, there's enough in seven where I'm like, all right, give me seven. All right. Well, no, I, I understand what you mean. And uh, I would be even more pissed if I didn't know what was coming uh, with the big, big turns. So I got you. I understand yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But uh, overall, I, I do like it a lot. I, I think it's pretty similar to the first season. I, I wish that they ended it better, but I think it's equally good to the first season and uh, we got way more dragons way more magic development which i i'm loving we did see yeah the alice river's character was good I, I did like her a lot yep and hopefully some more answers and but yeah just love seeing all the visions stuff that they kind of shied away from in game of thrones near the end they like the dreams what we talked about it in another episode how they didn't do any of the cool dreams from the books they did whatever one for every five cool dreams yep and uh, so they're really leaning into it, adding dreams that didn't happen in the books, and uh, there's a lot to build on. I'm uh, I'm optimistic, uh, so I I still think it's it was really great. I would I would uh, I'd give it a great score, whatever. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. yeah. Well, I mean, good. I know that's it's good. not it's not a nine because it, they didn't pay off, but everything. But I would I'd say it's still eight eight five kind of thing. Oh, it's still great. I'd go with a, I'd go with like a hard seven. I think for this season. I think it's understandable. This season left me wanting more, which stinks because after that first episode, man, I was like, holy shit. I was like, we're fucking back. Like, this is going to be wild. This season's going to be nuts. There we're was some crazy shit, but yeah, sprinkled in. With yeah. Some not crazy stuff, yeah. It's just to end season one with fucking Luke getting eaten by Vagar. And then the next, the, the premiere of this season ends with a baby's head being decapitated. It was like, holy shit, like. This is going to be fucking nuts. Yeah. And then it just wasn't fucking nuts at all. It just wasn't. Episode four was good. Yep. Rook's Rest was pretty wild. Episode four was good. And the uh, dragon claiming uh, thing from uh, episode seven was cool. Seven. Yeah. Seven was okay. I think uh, six was the other one I think I liked. A yeah, it was. Six was the other one I liked a lot. But like I said, I'd go hard, hard seven. I think that's fair. I think there's a high chance it'll improve with uh with the rest of it, but I think so. I think you're totally entitled to your critiques. And, I think uh, it's just this the way I, I'm telling you those last two episodes. I just don't want people to give up on it because they're it is gonna pay off. It 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 was obviously good build up. Like that's why we're all pissed. So it's gonna it's gonna pay off. It just felt the same way. Like I feel like we left the last two seasons feeling the exact same way, which was like, all right, next season's gonna be crazy. Yeah. It's it's tough. I don't know. It just it's a weird like I said, it's a weird spot to leave off the season because you would never like I just think like Daenerys like sailing on her boats like across the fucking kingdoms. Well like Daenerys giving that speech to her army, like, all right, we're gonna go fucking do like it's always like a big moment that 
puts the character on like almost a new path sort of for like the next season. It's never left like, all right, next season, two years from now, this fucking first episode is going to be a wild fucking battle. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, you know what I mean? That's just like weird. Are you gonna, it doesn't feel right. Like I said, you can tell that there was something wrong. I think HBO is like you said, committed to the time, uh, the time of the release. And yeah. So hopefully, I don't know what that means now. Like I don't know if that means, we just have like longer episodes and two seasons of like 10 up. Ep- you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause if these were meant to be at the end of season two, what does that mean going forward? Was like season four only supposed to be eight episodes or how are we going to divide this now? Right. So that's something I guess I'm interested in, but two years and we have Knights of the seven kingdoms coming next summer. It's cool. Uh, before we wrap, I said, let's do a couple of winners and losers from this season. I got four winners and like the whole rest of the show is losers. Yeah. You can start start us off. Start us off with somebody. Go winners right. first. Well, I got one that I know we'll agree on. Oh, I do see him on your list. Uh, Sir Simon Strong. Simon was awesome. Yeah. I don't Simon, think he did anything Simon's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> he was he was the comedic relief in a not like weird way. He he didn't yeah. stick out like a like the pirates did, you know. Right, right, right. Um, not in your face, but yeah. and he was Basically, like the viewer, there's like one time where Damon finally did something good, and you just see him like clapping in the background. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He, he's very funny. He's he's the one questioning Damon on the stuff we we're questioning him about. You know, he's I liked him last the king week. consort. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the stuff we're we're wondering. He's saying I liked him last week when uh, the kid was mouthing off to Damon. And he just kept looking over at Damon, just like yo, chill, like, don't, right. don't do it, bro, don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, he's very much the uh, the audience's like. Yeah, uh, that's a good way to put it. Manifestation. That's yeah. a good way to put it. I like that. Yeah. Um. So he's he's a great one. He is a good one. I uh, there, I have some other good ones, but um, someone that's not on your list there. But I would say Alice Rivers was really really fucking cool. Yeah, she was a good character. She I, was. A I good was not character. expecting her to be that cool, and I liked her possibly a lot. like a complete fucking ghost mystery. I like entity thing. No idea. Pretty cool. You, you mentioned a good point with the uh, the healing thing uh, when the old Tully Lord went down. Right. Simon, Simon Strong Simon mentioned. Yeah. So that that she she was sent to try to fix him, and he died shortly after. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we at least acknowledge that she is like a person that exists in reality. Yeah. Unless was... unless Simon was like testing Damon to see like if, oh, maybe. if he'd heard of her or something. Getting wild. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? All right. I don't hate it, but yeah, no, she's another winner. Who do you um, got? Who do you got? I was to say I'm gonna go with my favorite character. Who took a? I didn't have much of an opinion on her after season one. Bay was the man. Bay was all, not the man, but Bay was the girl. Bay was the woman. Yep. Bay was awesome. I fucking love this girl. She's great. Yeah. She's fucking talking chase off of a fucking cliff. She's doing whatever right now. I tells her. She's like she sees Cole and she ain't even hesitating. She's like, yo, like let's freaking go. Yep. Laid down the law with her dad when uh, when yeah, he was like too. not really trying to take the hand of the queen. Yep, he just she just like owned him. <laughs> that. Put it, put him in place. Yep, being stern but nice with Jace, like you said, like needs that. Yep, needs that. Yep, softly directing him, what like slapping him in the face with reality, but gently. <laughs> I loved. We talked about it on the episode. I loved that. It was the first time in this entire show that I felt like this girl like doesn't ride her dragon. She drives her dragon. Everybody mm. else is riding and kind of just doing whatever the dragon does. They give out like little commands like blow fire. You know what I mean? She was driving her dragon. Yeah. She was like fucking steering it, wheeling it. She knew how to ride that. I thought that was awesome. I thought that was so cool. Yep. I loved that scene. Yep. She's got a manual transmission on that thing. She's, For real. She's, yeah. <laughs> pulling all the strings. Yeah. She had full control over that dragon, which we see like the op, like fucking Eamon and Vagar. Vagar does whatever it wants to do. It has no control. Right. Rainey's, I would say, is probably the coolest. Rainey's was, was pretty good with freaking uh, Maley's. Yeah, 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 there you go. Uh, the only other two winners I had were not actual characters in the show, but Tom Glenn Carney, who plays Aegon, and then Fia Sabin, who plays Helena. Yeah. I thought both of them were... Like just stand like stand out incredible this season. I yeah. thought they both did like incredible jobs. Tough characters to play too. Yep, I, exactly. Like weird peeps. You know, one one not only is like an asshole, but gets burned to smithereens. Had a horrible season, season one yeah. as far as like appealing to the audience. Right. Like totally hateable, and I feel like he. 
I feel like it was just because of the actual kid that played him. Like, he came off as charismatic. Like, you could feel, like, he was just good. Like, he was just talented. Like, I could feel the vibe from him. I liked him from the very first episode, and I, I thought he did a great job this season. Yep. Yeah, he, he really did well. He, he was, wasn't a winner as a character, but as an actor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I thought he did great. And like I said, Fia Saban, I thought she was awesome, too. I thought she did a great, great job. Oh, yeah. Uh, one, like, last one to throw in there. I feel like Damon, I had I did not really know if he was going to come around or not from his deep, dark place of yeah, yeah, like, yeah. betraying the people he loves. So for him to come all the way around and have his full like come to jesus moment i'd say he's a winner too yeah i mean plus he's the man so yes he's already been. the coolest guy but he has a lot of sketchy parts about him that are not enviable and uh but he he dominated them by the end yeah he controlled that shit and now he's ready to fight for his lady his lady small small time winner is uh that kid the little lloyd tully Mm. Kid had like one like one or two scenes but man he was awesome yeah he was he turned it on last week yeah he like Kind of stuck it to Damon, too. He did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, big time. Uh, let's go losers. I'm going to start off right out of the gate with Jace. Jace is a character that I was expecting so much of, especially this season. I was like, all right, like, I'm going to take the jump. This kid's going to be better than Damon. Like, I'm going to ride for this kid. And he pissed me off all season. He was such a bitch. All he did was cry and complain the entire fucking season. He didn't yeah. do anything of merit. Aside from, like, the small... Like, he went and... Cut a Gave away bridge. Heron Hall. Yeah. <laughs> Like, good job, dude. Even when he went to Winterfell, it's like you came back with 2,000 old-ass dudes. It's like, it's something, but it's not exactly like a victory. It's not like, well, like, all right, let's go. Right. And then the twins thing was just to actually make that be helpful. Like, it wasn't. Exactly. That's all it was helping was the old guys to get there faster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing of actual merit, like I said. All I did was bitch and cry. I was very, I was pissed off. And then he came up with a good idea, finally, and then he gets mad with the results of it. It just... I thought it was a, a terrible, terrible season for Jace. And now I'm just so down on him as a character entirely going forward. I hope he's got some, some good stuff coming. but Maybe he can sway me. But yeah, he's he's had a tough run, especially after such a good first episode where it seemed like he was turning around. Uh, let's see. Raynar. Mm. Down on Loser. Raynar. Yeah, just, just stalling too much. It's too Way too much. Winner as a character, a though. Kid. She's she's in a way stronger position than she was eight episodes ago. Sure. Sure. But, but you're disappointed in her, yeah. Definitely. Dragging her feet, especially after a kid died, was just so hesitant. Then, like, Damon leaves and goes and does whatever he wants for a full season. She doesn't do anything about it. All that shit worked out, though. It worked out, but it's like, <laughs> it just worked out. <laughs> it, like, worked out. It didn't, like, it wasn't because of anything she did. It was destiny. Meryl Dunn's was small. Corliss, bad dad, lost his wife. Bad Corliss. <laughs> yeah. Allison's got no role in the world. Damon's got no screen time, and Cole just sucks. <laughs> yeah, I had Allison as the biggest loser. <laughs> yeah, she just yeah she yeah, lost she, everything basically. Yeah, she she was like trying so hard to have an influence while Viserys was king, and then Amon takes over or Amon and uh, and she just gets kicked out. And, At least with Aegon, yeah. she had a chance to get a little bit of. A little bit in, you know what I mean? She was able to sway him a little bit. Aemon, right. nothing gets booted right off the fucking yeah. the council. Just has no respect for her, and she she just goes and does a uh, like spirit finding journey in the in the wilderness, and goes and lays in the lake. Yeah, and decides that she's gonna give up her son so that she can go f be free somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's her, about that's her. A twenty second deliberation. Yeah, not great. Not Crazy. Great. Uh, I know you had Aegon as a winner, or the actor as a winner, but he, he had a bad season in general. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Got yeah. toasted. He did get toasted. He learned learned a lot in the process, but... Uh, he did. He made it out alive. Not doing so great. He made it out alive. Um, he did show some balls charging in on Maylees. That's always nice. Yep. He tried to give the man his goats back. That was nice. Yep. <laughs> I'm in. I like Aegon. I don't know why, but I'm in on Aegon. No, I do too. I I'm in know. on him. He's uh he's caught in the crossfire here. He's not a really bad guy. Yeah, he didn't even want to take it, take the throne in the first place. He didn't. He literally had to be like found by the by the twins, right? Yep, yep, that's right. Yeah. Hiding underneath some church, like I don't even know, a church table or some kind of shit, yeah. altar of some sort. Yeah. So he was he was not trying to do this shit. He's just victim of the situation. Yeah. No, I hear you. Uh, you got any more losers? Are we doing most improved too? Go ahead. I was just gonna give that to all of the uh, dr dragon seeds. 
Yeah, they they got a big bump. Yeah, they all really really did much better. And then uh, Masaria too. She went from she went from uh, prisoner. Oh, the white worm. Yep. Uh, like she went from prisoner. No gotcha. yeah. What's her name? Masaria. Gotcha. Yep. Went from prisoner to being freed to big combo. like basically the queen's hand. Even though Carlos is the queen's hand, she seems to be getting more sway and more uh, more microphone time with Rhaenyra. Yep. Most improved to me. I mean, again, it's, it's, that's why I already said it. it's Bela. Bela's a gangster. I love yeah. I love her. She's, I'm all in. Her, Damon, Damon's probably number one, and then Bela's number two. Yeah, I'm with you on that, man. Damon was my number one winner. Therapy session, Damon. Therapy session, Damon. <laughs> I, I, like I said, I, I liked all the Harren Hall stuff. The people that were complaining about it, I just, like, yeah. do you not want Damon in the show? Because that's the alternative. And then we're just going to do more of the same shit with the councils and the boringness. And, yeah. I hope the um, the vision part at the end maybe made those people change their minds. Yeah, that's the little bit of uh, like because it gives her some real areas. credibility. She's not just creeping him out. She's like she's leading she, him towards yeah, some yeah, path yeah, 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 of yeah. destiny. Like using the weirwoods too, which I like. Yeah, she's not just trying to fuck with him and showing the three out of She's got yeah, right. That, that's awesome. I can't wait for them to be the Aegon's Conquest show and we get some kind of tie into the Three Eyed Raven. I'm just going to be like, this guy has been here since before everything, man. Right? <laughs> yeah. And it just took him thousands of years to play out his master plan. <laughs> but with Brandon Stock, he finally did it in his little wheelchair. Yeah. Uh, You'll never walk again, so but you will fly. fly. I think that was all I had overall. I think that was all I got. Yeah. You got anything else? Uh no, I think we, we covered it all, man. We're we're looking forward to next season. I feel like we got uh, left hanging a little bit, but for sure. No, I think we covered it all. Good episode, bad finale. Two year hi- uh, hiatus, but we'll be back next year in Westeros with uh, the Night of the Seven Kingdoms. So not as long a wait as normal. We're gonna be going back to back to back for the next foreseeable summer. So that's cool, right? Um, but I think that's gonna basically wrap it up. Good season. Yeah, it was all right. It was all right. Somewhere between 7 and 8.5. I'll tell you that I'm <laughs> still excited for it to come back. Yeah, I, I just hope people don't give up on it. That's all. Uh, it seems like some people online are. I don't know if those are just dramatic people. Yeah, there's always those losers. On but uh, there are a bunch of schmucks. They'll be back. Yeah, don't like, worry. It don't was worry. not the worst episode of television you've ever seen. You're, you're going to be okay. No, definitely not. Uh, but I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Lukey, thank you for as as always for coming on through this no whole season. You did pretty much every episode, so I really of appreciate course. it. No problem, man. I love it. It's a good time as always, and uh, yeah, happy participant in the Cinema Lords. Love appreciate, it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Probably have you back for a couple times in a couple weeks when uh, Rings of Power starts. I'll be here, baby. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Uh, for the next like week, two weeks, it's gonna be a little bit slower than we have been. We're gonna do a Cobra Kai episode, and then I'm hoping to do an episode with Ken Jack, but. That's still got to be uh, TBD. But that'll be cool, hopefully. Uh, for now, though, that's going to wrap it up for you, us here tonight. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Hope you guys enjoyed Season 2 of House of the Dragon. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Happy watching. Peace out.